<laughs> so much. So, hey, Carl, it's good to join you again today. Let's let's talk about this rapid growth of the acceptance of particularly the transgender movement. Carl, do, does the speed at which our nation is addressing this and embracing this alarm you at all? Well, of course it does. Of course. And and, and the thing that's, that's alarming about it, uh, that's a head-scratcher, less than one-half of 1% one of all Americans identify as transgender. Less than 2% of all Americans identify as homosexual. Now, let's just say that there are more transgenders and homosexuals than that, but they're just kind of still afraid to kind of admit it publicly for whatever reason, family, jobs, whatever. Uh, but still, I mean, we're talking a very teeny, minuscule percentage of the entire American population uh, claims to be involved in these lifestyles, and of course the Bible calls them sinful and, uh, and uh, uh, abhorrent lifestyles. But yet they seem, guys, to be driving the agenda mm -hmm. of government, public education, media, corporate America. It's, it's unbelievable, and you scratch your head and you say, how can this be? How can this be? Well, just humanly speaking, statistically speaking, we know that that, let's say, 2% of, 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 of homosexual America, of course, they're related to a lot of people who may be straight, but, you know, who, who want to, you know, feel for them or, mm. or sympathize with them or empathize with them. Um, I, I know they're not looking for sympathy. That's the wrong word, em to empathize with them. And, and so they, they've got a lot of support that way. But I just, you know, people scratch their heads and say, how is it that everything, the TV programming, movies, mm. media, Hollywood, uh, corporate America, government, public schools, public school agendas, sex education, how is this all being driven by this radical homosexual movement? Um, you know, and, and, and guys, the answer is, it's the prophetic times in which we're living. Mm -hmm. it, Jesus himself said, not this crazy preacher on, on the coast on northwest Florida, and by the way, I am crazy, but, <laughs> but not me. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, that before his return, it would be like the days of Lot, the days of mm -hmm. Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. He said it would be like the days of Noah. Well, what were the days of mm -hmm. Noah? The Bible speaks of they were eating and drinking and, quote, given in marriage, and right up to the day that the flood came. And then it goes on to say that the, everything they thought, everything they did was exceedingly wicked. In other words, in the days of Noah, humanity had lost its ever-loving mind. And now, I think, guys... Mike and Dave, I think we're seeing this depravity of mind that Romans 1 predicted mm -hmm. and that the entire scriptures predict that would be a mark, would be indicative of the prophetic last days. And, and just for your audience that has never heard me before, let me remind them, when I speak of last days, I'm, I'm not a date setter, I'm not a hand wringer, I, 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 I'm a very positive person, I am, I enjoy life and, and everything that life has to offer, but I'm also a, a preacher and a man of God and and, and I know the times in which we're living, and I'm, I'm a discerner of times. Um, I don't know the exact time of the return of the Lord. I don't even know if he will come in our lifetime, but I know that there is a convergence of last day's prophecies taking place, and it truly is, and I'm going to use a scriptural phrase, coming in like a flood right now. Mm -hmm. And we agree, and uh, we've been talking about these things for, for so long, and I know you have too, Carl. First uh, John uh, chapter 3, verse 13, do not be surprised, brethren, if the world hates you. And we're seeing more and more of that from the major institutions that you mentioned earlier, Hollywood media, uh, government schools. And let me talk about the media for a minute and ask you what your take is on how, I know to the left, influence is everything. And people, the general public, do not typically hear both sides of like a religious issue, a social issue, moral issues, really, from the liberal media. And as a result, people are confused and they're uninformed about some of the most serious, pressing, controversial issues being discussed today. How, Carl, how did they get away, the media, with duping the public? And it just, it, it seems like right now tolerance is a one-way street. Well, no, you, listen, you, bingo, you've nailed all of it. Tolerance is a one-way street. Tolerance, the tolerance movement, is nothing more than a massive hypocrisy deception. It is, it is riddled with hypocrisy. But you asked the question, very good question, and I think I have an answer, at least a part of the answer. How can they get away with invoking such deception upon the masses? How can that be? And, 
if some of your audience isn't going to like this answer, but because I am one, I'm a part of uh, uh, of this uh, formula. I, I think I'm on the positive part. But the answer is because the pulpits are letting them get away with it. Mm-hmm. The vast majority of pulpits across America, the one uh, institution, if you would, that should be addressing these things from a biblical perspective, balanced biblical. I don't mean with hate speech and uh, speech and vitriol, but with the truth of what God's Word says about these social issues, abortion, evolution, homosexual marriage, transgenderism. All of these are spoken of one way or the other very powerfully in the Word of God. Yet, yet, as my latest book points out, and I've got another one coming out this fall, but my very latest one right now, um, Be Thou Prepared, Equipping the Church for Persecution in Times of Trouble, I have documented in there uh, George Barna Group um, uh, and, and um, oh gosh, what's the, the, the mm, another, an, another Christian uh, pollster. But anyway, I have documented polls uh, reliable, mainstream, uh, very well-known polls and pollsters who have polled thousands of conservative Christian pastors. This is how they identify themselves all over America. And then they discovered that a full 90% of these guys admit that all of these issues are in the Word of God, begging to be addressed. They mm-hmm. admit that they're there. But more than 90% of them say, we never address these issues, never Mm. address these issues from our pulpit. Why? Because they're afraid they're going to offend somebody. They're afraid they're going to lose some kind of, you know, tax-exempt status, or they're afraid that they're going to lose people. And if they lose people, they lose money, and then they can't pay for their big buildings. And it's just, it's so sad, guys. Mm -hmm. So much of the church has gone the way of the secular society in corporate America. It's all about money, power, and influence, rather than standing on the truth, come what may, declaring, thus saith the Lord. And, and I think that's a big part of it, Dave. That's an excellent question you asked, but I really think that's, that's what it is. Because, look, the White House is not going to tell us biblical truth. Uh, Hollywood's not going to. Hmm. Our politicians are not going to. The public schools certainly are not going to. It, television's not going to. The entertainment industry is not going to. So, who's going to tell? Who's going to tell the generations? Who's going to tell the people? The, the, the shepherds. The shepherds. Jeremiah talked about this just before Israel fell. The shepherds were leading the sheep to slaughter. They were lying to the sheep. They were prophesying peace and safety when sudden destruction was on its way because mm. there was a, 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 a drought of the truth of God's word. And guys, we're watching this same scenario play out in America, I do believe. What do you guys think? Mm -hmm. Carl, I think you're right. And, you know, I know you're a student of history like I am. And I I always look to the years before World War II when the uh, English Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain kept appeasing Hitler. And he'd come back and say, we have peace in our time. And I wonder, Carl, from a pastor's perspective, do you think it's that many of these pastors just think, well, if we ignore this problem, at least we'll continue, we'll get to continue doing church as usual. And if that's their attitude, then, you know, maybe we'll, we'll just stay out of the fray and we'll go unattacked. Is that a realistic approach? Yeah. Well, no, it's not a realistic approach. It's a very naive approach. It's a very, it, it denies historical fact, historical precedent, because as you so aptly pointed out, Mike and Dave, um, it, it just, just take a look at history. There, there's never been a situation where when God's people, all the way back in the ancient Old Testament biblical days, when the prophets, pastors, shepherds of God refused to speak the word of God, trying to curry favor with the people and with the government, only disaster comes from that. It may take several generations, but eventually you wind up with a generation that not only does not know the truth of God's word, but rejects it and then rejects the messengers of God's word, and then they reject the people of God, and then they begin to persecute the people of God. And that that is the the downhill slope of this whole thing, historically speaking, and we're watching it. We're on that downhill slope right now because of the same dynamics. Now, not all churches, not all pulpits are like that. I know mine is not, and there's a there is a percentage that is not. I mean, I don't want to be like the prophet Elijah that said, oh, Lord, I'm the only one. <laughs> and he said, quit whining, boy, I've got 7,000 just like you out there. So 
So there are thousands of pastors who are standing in the pulpit proclaiming, Thus saith the Lord. And they're doing it in contextual balance. And God bless them. That's what I strive for. But the problem is, guys, the vast, vast majority are not. And we're raising up generations of children who literally think that they came from monkeys and that it's okay to reach in a mother's womb and pull out a baby. But don't step on a turtle egg now. That's, that's blasphemous. And they literally think that a marriage can be anything it wants or that a person born a male or born a female can later on just arbitrarily decide to change everything. And, and their generations are being raised t- and, and taught these things, and we're living in the prophetic days of truth being thrown to the ground. The last thing you just said, yeah, truth is being trampled by moral relativism and these lies. It's being buried under these lies. And, you know, the left is winning the argument, and they don't even have the truth and the facts on their side. Uh, Pastor Carl, Carl, we understand that the, the issue we don't want to talk about, but we're forced to practically, is this bathroom bill, the bathroom debate. <laughs> what bathroom should you use in public schools and rest- I mean, uh, universities and, uh, you know, even stores? I want to ask you about this. First of all, we know the Obama administration took the lead by um, they put their fir- the first gender neutral restroom in the Eisenhower building in the White House. All right. So they set set the stage for this. Now we know that Target Corporation and a lot of others are kind of falling in line here. Um, of course, Target has supported the LGBT movement, just like Starbucks and a lot of others for years. And they just announced that any customer can use any bathroom or change room they feel comfortable in because they are very, quote, inclusive. How, since pastors are not talking about this generally, and they're not getting this information from the media, Christians, Pastor Carl, how can Christians or how should Christians respond to this? Because more of the corporations are going to fall in line with what the Obama administration is doing, what the liberal media is promoting. Yeah. Well, bottom line, let me, let me answer your question first and then speak to the philosophy of this whole thing, because I think the, the radical gay movement is going to overplay its hand with this. And I'll tell you something else they're going to overplay their hand with, and that's when they start teaching the mechanics of homosexual sex to the little children in schools. And they're already starting to do that, mm-hmm. and parents are just revolting uh, about it. But anyway, back to your to do you think, what, what do we do? How do we address it? Well, corporate America, regardless of whatever else they, they, they want us to believe about them, they are driven by the bottom line, money. If Target, for whatever reason, see, listen, I, this word target is so funny, isn't it? <laughs> Christians are being targeted by the radical gay movement. So if Christians will now target Target, <laughs> you know, because they've joined, they've joined themselves with the radical gay movement, and they, ha- they are now dealing in one of the most perverse, insane uh, offerings that any civilized culture has ever dreamed of, and that is you just choose any bathroom you want. They kid, listen, less than 2% of the entire population of America claims to even be homosexual in the first place. As I said, less than one half of 1% claim to be transgender. So that means the vast majority of America, when it's time for them to do their private business, they don't want the opposite sex looming around over them and with them and, and being a part of that. I mean, that is insane. It goes against human nature to the core. That's why I say that I think they may be overplaying their hand with this. So I encourage Christians, and pastors must talk about it. There are appropriate ways to speak of this. We're doing it right now over public radio. You can speak of these things appropriately from the pulpit. I do. It takes a little work. You have to be creative. Mm -hmm. You've got children in the audience. But a lot of our children are being confronted with this Mm -hmm. in schools and from their uh, from their playmates, as they hear their parents talk about. So you've got to address it. You've got to use social media. Um, almost every Christian in every pew now has the world at their fingertips, almost like every pastor does. In other words, I'm all over the Internet, but I have the same access to the Internet that any person in my church does if they would get involved. Exactly. And so we've got to speak out. You've mm-hmm. got to write letters to Target. People have to, you know, and I'm not usually one that calls for boycotts Mm -hmm. and stuff, but I mean, nowadays, I think that's what we need to do. And we need to just agree not to take our money to Target, for example, and uh, we'll see what happens. But I, people, people are rebelling. I know in a million years, I would not, you know, uh, well, my wife wouldn't do it. So when I say I wouldn't let her, but I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't 
allow her to to be to 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 be uh, to succumb to something like that. If by chance we were in Target, and by the way, we won't be anymore uh, until they change that. But if we were, and if she had to use the restroom, we, we we would load up. I would get her to the nearest restroom that was not transgendered. And but 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 Christians are going to have to speak up and. And pastors are going to have to address this from the pulpit, and Christians are going to have to quit taking their money and giving to these people, forcing these agendas upon us, guys. Yeah, and that's really where the uh, the, the rubber meets the road. The Lord Christ himself said, you cannot serve two gods, money and God. You will love one, hate the other. Our guest right. this morning, Pastor Carl Gallops, when we come back, we're going to ask Carl, how do parents respond to their children who are being targeted for sexual confusion? Our final segment with Pastor Carl Gallopson just got an email in from Kevin who said, Pastor Carl, how do we talk with our children who are being indoctrinated into sexual confusion without coming across as hateful, bigoted Christians? Yeah, thank you. Well, again, I'm going to say that's going to take thought and prayer, intelligence and creativity, but you speak truthfully, you speak forthrightly, you speak with authority, you speak with no hatred at all, uh, but you speak truth and balance and nature, the facts of of natural, you know, life and nature and and the word of God. But I, I mean, I'm not leaving out the word of God when I say nature. But I'm saying the word of God is clear of how we were created and who we are. And and you and you speak honestly with your children. Listen, I I do this from the pulpit again, and I'm speaking to you know many hundreds of people, and and, and from little children to senior adults. And so I craft my, my words and my presentation in a way that's very clear, very forthright, very biblical, but at the same time gracious, balanced, loving, and, and, uh, and commonsensical. And people respond to that. So parents are going to have to really be involved in parenting. Uh, you know? and, and, of course, I'm not passing any judgment on Kevin, or really I'm not judging any parent. I am a parent and grandparent, so I, I know the difficulties of it. But I know a lot of parents, guys, have checked out of parenting. They just they mm-hmm. kind of leave it to the public schools. They kind of leave it to the institutions and authorities. They, you know, leave it to the social media. Sit mm-hmm. their kids down and hand them a cell phone. Sit them down in front of the internet. Sit them down in front of a television or a, or a, or a video game, and and they've checked out. And and they're going to have to kind of wrap it up, get a rein back on their children and family life, have discussions. Most families don't even sit around the dinner table anymore. I know in, in my family that's where a lot of parental discussion and guidance took place. So parents are going to have to reassess not only their home life and their family life, but their communication process. And then they're also going to have to reassess the church family that they belong to and the, the church family they have their children in and and if if they do and I pray they do but but not every church is addressing these things sunday schools aren't addressing them a lot of pulpits aren't addressing them so if the church doesn't do it and the parents don't do it then then we're in a mess uh, but I- Our our guest, Pastor Carl Gels, we have several calls on hold. Let's try to get to them as quickly as we can. Uh, Ron, good morning. Quickly, what is your question for Pastor Gallops? Oh, hey, Mike. Good day. Oh, hey. Hey, Hey, uh, Pastor Gallops, uh, good to hear from you. Thank you for uh, all you do. And uh, I'm going to talk to a former law enforcement man who who has got a mind of law enforcement, so he does not skip things or mince words on stuff. So, hey, uh, friend. Well, I, I, a story happened at Easter. I think this is what right, right into a wheelhouse for you to hit this one out of the park. But uh, my niece, my nieces were uh, were talking at, during the Easter celebration about they go to a Christian school, raised in a Christian family, and the youngest one asked me. She's in uh, high school, ninth grade. She asked me, "What's wrong with Bernie Sanders?" Now she's grown up in a Christian home, grown up in a Christian school throughout her whole life, and the older niece mm. earlier and, and, and had asked. Well, what's wrong? We have we have a gay uh, cousin. She, they have a gay cousin. What's wrong with homosexuality? There's nothing really wrong with it. I mean, there's you know people can choose what they want. These are kids that grow up in a Christian environment, day in and day out. Strong Christian parents that have this from some. So they got it from somewhere. I mean, how can you battle this when you sit there and have have this running rampant inside the Christian community? And our young people are being how are they being indoctrinated? I mean, really. So 
So I don't know. You, you tell me how you win that battle, and I'll and I'll, I'll be glad to thanks, jump on board. Thanks, thank you, Dave. Hey, Carl. Before we respond to Dave's question, let me get to our other caller here, and then we can kind of bunch all this together. Uh, Ron, good morning. What's your question for Pastor Gallops? Yeah, we seem to have a problem on our phone. Like, yeah, Carl, we actually we actually just lost all the calls when we, we tried did. to go to that third uh, third let's, phone let's, line. Let's call Pastor Gar- uh, Carl back real quick. So something, uh, somebody. Well, hey, you, why don't you tackle the question, uh, Mike? I'll, I mean, even Christian I'll, schools. I'll do the best I can while we here. get Pastor Carl Gabs back on. Dave, it's such an important question you asked um, because our children are have been slowly indoctrinated into, I think, the wrong belief that Christians are judgmental and that we are self-righteous and, and holier than thou art. And I think one of the areas where we failed a little bit, I know I certainly have, Dave, is that we have come across as uh, better than other people and judgmental. Listen, I, I, I have members of my own family uh, who like Bernie Sanders. And you know what? Bernie Sanders may be a very likable, honest man, but the bottom line is he promotes a godless system of Marxism. Now, let's hear from an expert instead of me. Yes. Carl, did you get a chance to hear Dave's question? You know, I did not. Um, okay. I lost contact there with sorry the phone. I'm that. so let, sorry. Let me, let me rephrase it. He said he's got members of his uh, uh, cousins and nephews who were raised in Christian families who say things like, well, what's so bad about Bernie Sanders or what's so wrong about someone being homosexual? And this is coming from Christian families. How do we respond to this? Yeah. Well, again, um, hey, our, our culture for several generations has been dumbed down. And again, you're dealing with people who have a sense and, a, and maybe even a love for God and an understanding of, of, of God the Creator, but they have not been discipled. They have not, they're not getting it from the pulpit. So how do you respond? Well, here's how I respond. And, and we could talk about this for hours. I'm just giving my short answer, so I hope I'm not coming across too simplistic. But I always begin an answer like that, um, Dave. Dave is the caller, right? Yes, sir. Yep. Okay. Dave, thank you for listening, and thanks for calling. I always begin an answer like that. Listen, I'm asked questions like that not only from friends and family and people, but I do a lot of interviews. And so I have hosts, uh, secular hosts, ask me questions like that. And I always begin the answer with this. Look. I come from a biblical worldview. I know what God's Word says about that in context. And I can tell you what God's Word says. I stand with what God's Word says about, quote, what's so bad about homosexuality, quote, what's so bad about the the tenets of communism and socialism. Now, the Bible doesn't use those words, but it does speak a lot about freedom and freedom of the human will and the ability to serve and to worship the Lord and and, and, you know, w- without the government crushing you down. It's, so I begin with, I come from a biblical worldview. I know what the Bible says in context. I can answer your question. Do you want to know what God's Word says about this? And that's where I stand. And then the person would, you know, maybe say, well, yeah, what, what, what's your interpretation of what? And then I go and I quote Scripture. And or if I have a Bible, I'll open it and show them and have them read it out loud and say, what do you... What do you think this means? For example, if they're saying, what's so bad about homosexuality? I'll turn to Romans chapter 1 and say, just read this out loud. Read it. And mm. then you tell me what you think. I mean, if, if this is the Word of God. This is where I stand. This is where I come from. This is my answer. So that's, that's a quick... I mean, again, we could talk about this for hours, but that's my quick answer, is you unashamedly stand on the truth of God's Word. Do it in love. Do it in context. And, and make sure that people know... I mean, I do this on secular interviews. I've done it on Alan Combs before. I've been on his show four or five times, and, and, and he'll ask me something like that. And I'll say, Alan, I come from a biblical worldview. I can tell you what the Word of God says about it, and that's where I stand. I love and that. Even if, I yeah, love that. Yeah. Instead of making the argument us versus them, make it them versus the Bible. Exactly. Uh, you, them versus God. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. Uh, back to our phone lines. Ron, good morning. What's your question for Pastor Carl? Gale? Good morning, Mike. Am I on this time? Yes, sir. Okay, because last time I was talking to myself, I realized. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do that a lot, I know. So, <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, Carl, uh, another facet that that as we understand the spiritual battle that comes into play here is the acceptance of the Church of Islam. Now, uh, I'm going to frame this in a way that all ties together. But uh, as I understand, Target is mo- mostly owned, most of its shares by Muslims. Ironically enough. Could it be, do you think, that the debauchery they're pushing in the nation is actually to further weaken it so eventually their uh, Sharia and their morality 
could be implemented. Great. What question. is your name, sir? I missed your name when, when we went to, to you. It's Ron. Well, I'm Ron. Yeah. Ron. Okay, Ron. Listen, my brother, my man, I think that you have nailed it. And I have said this. I suspected it for the longest, but now because of the blatant inconsistencies and hypocrisies which you've just pointed out so so beautifully, Ron, I think that's a part of. I think that's exactly a part of what's going on. The more I have done research on Islam and how it conquers civilizations, they infiltrate and they they twist uh, around the truths of that culture. And they are activists, and they are radical, and they will attempt to work through the quote legal system of a culture, and kind of you know to overpopulate it, uh, to outpopulate that culture, uh, you know, with their own birth rate, and then to get involved, to run for office, to become the lawmakers, to become the judges, uh, to become the the movers, the thinkers, the shakers, the owners of corporate corporations and and businesses, and and and, and before long they're driving the agenda. So yes, I think that's exactly right, and I think that's part of what exactly is what is happening. And I'm not putting all the blame on Obama, but I think he's a huge factor in all of this. I mean, he obviously, from his own writings, and Mike LeMay and I talked about this in the early days of 2007, 2008, 9, and 10, and all of those days um, in, in the election, I mean, it, it, he has an affinity towards all things Muslim. And so... They've got a good friend in the White House. The Muslim Brotherhood is in our government. We know that for a fact. Mm -hmm. And now we have this same religious institution that's throwing homosexuals off of buildings in the Middle East, but yet in America, they're behind the scenes pushing and driving the radical homosexual agenda in the United States. So I think you've nailed it, Ron. And, you know, Carl, the sad thing is that we hear very little talk about the tenets of Islam. I mean, Islam calls for death to homosexuals and stoning of adulterers. So Christianity is being painted as the hateful religion when in reality it's Islam. Yes, well, exactly. And so what, as the Bible said, truth is being thrown to the ground. A massive deception is sweeping the planet and, and, and America especially, which, which America I know is not the absolute focus of biblical prophecy, but we are the largest Christian nation, and I use, I'm using air quotes here, that the planet has ever seen. So obviously this is where Satan would launch his attack in the last days. And so light is being called dark, dark is being called light, good is being called evil, and evil is being called good. Everything is being turned upside down. And I do think that radical Islam, the infiltrating Islam, is a part of this agenda. And I think Satan is using it. I, sure, I surely do. Carl, we talked off air, uh, and I just want to you know, get your comments on it uh, on the record here. Um, you know, the, the hypocrisy and the double standard, you know, we know that um, Islam is not very peaceful for those who are really following what the Quran teaches. And we, we talked about corporations like uh, Apple, IBM, Starbucks, um, joining other companies, boycotting the North Carolina governor and to repeal the bathroom bill. But why aren't they also threatening to pull their business from Iran and Saudi Arabia where homosexuals are being murdered? And you don't hear a peep about this in our media or from the left. So why do you think that is? Yeah. Well, my brother, it, it goes to what we've just been saying. There, there is a... Christian America is going to have to wake up to the fact that we are being infiltrated. And we, there is an agenda to overthrow, and I'm going to use these words, and I'm not trying to be cute when I use it, but to fundamentally change America. There is an agenda to do that. And it is being done right under our noses. And again, pulpits are strangely, shamefully silent in this. Politicians, people we elect to represent us, people who, who promise us, you know, the Tea Party kind of promises, you know, smaller government, more control, uh, you know, the, the word of God brought back, et cetera, et cetera. We elect them, they go to Washington, and something happens. Either they're threatened or they're corrupted or they were hypocrites in the first place just using the system. But, we, you know, politicians that we elect to represent us are, 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 are not doing what they said. Uh, corporations, many of them have been infiltrated. The government is being infiltrated. Our culture is being infiltrated. The guy that's in the White House now that's been there eight years told us from the beginning, 
I am going to fundamentally change America. We're watching it happen from our medical system being devastated, our economy being devastated. Forty-something percent of people in America don't even work their own government roles and handouts. And I know that some of it's legitimate. I know you have listeners that couldn't survive if it wasn't for the uh, for the benevolence of the American taxpaying people and through government programs. I'm not talking about legitimate need. I'm talking about people who have just opted out and and our borders are open, uh, um, uh, refugees are being poured in and scattered around places in the United States, sprinkled into largely uh, formerly conservative areas. Why? Well, now they're talking about it openly because they know that these people will vote. Most of them will vote uh, the more liberal ticket where they're going to get government handouts. Mm -hmm. So our nation can't survive Mm -hmm. like this, guys, Mm -hmm. Dave. And, Mm -hmm. And that's what's happening. The hypocrisy is rank from top to bottom. And a lot of it has to do with infiltration. Mm-hmm. Carl, we've got a couple minutes left. Your book, Be Thou Prepared, I think is such a clarion call to the church. What do you as a pastor and what do you recommend to other pastors we do to spiritually prepare the flock for the incredible days ahead? Yeah. Well, you know what, guys? I don't know that it can be done overnight. You know, some, some pastors are going to have to play catch up here. A lot of pastors are using my book now to preach and teach from it and to develop Bible studies around it, and churches are using it. And there are other good materials out there as well. Mine's not the only one, but but I think mine is very unique in many ways. But the bottom line is we're going to have to teach and preach the truth about prophecy, the prophetic days in which we're living. My new book coming out this fall is going to assist. It doesn't get into eschatological schemes and rapture timing or anything like that. It just deals with what the Bible says and where we are. And God's people are going to have to wake up to this. Millions and millions and millions, billions of people around the world are talking about these things. They know, they sense that things just aren't right all over the world. And pastors and teachers are going to have to begin discipling their people, preparing them, uh, equipping them with the truth of God's Word, helping them to understand that that everything is not America centric. Just because Starbucks is open today and you know and there's going to be some ball game on TV doesn't mean all is right with the world. The world is coming unraveled at the seams. Prophetic uh, convergences are are coming upon the world at a rapid pace and God's people especially in America have better wake up from their stupor and get engaged uh Uh, Be the salt, be the light, don't grow weary of doing good. Speak up, speak out. We've been raised up for such a time as this, guys. God is entrusting us in these days in which we're living to shine the light. As the the darkness grows darker, we need to turn up the light. And uh, so anyway, again, I could talk for hours. This Uh is overly simplistic answer to your question, but... But I think that's where it begins. And and it, it also begins with, you know, not looking at things in the temporal realm, but looking to eternity, individually looking to the promise of Jesus Christ. And then, exactly. as you said, Carl, also taking our responsibility to be light and salt and share the gospel seriously. Exactly. We appreciate you, brother. We always love having you on. And may the Lord continue to, to bless you in your endeavors. Mike and Dave, may the Lord bless you and keep you. Thank you for having me. I can't wait till I'm back on with you again. God uh, bless you. Thanks we'll look for this forward day. to it. Thank you, Pastor and author Carl Gallops. When we come back.